Alright, the Aero 15. Let's see how good it is with content creation. Let's slam. So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. So we are indeed inside the RTX 2070 Max-Q version of the Aero 15. We first have a look at the disc. Nice fast disc. Nearly 3,000 reads, you know, 1,200 writes. That's perfectly fine. The good thing about this is because they use Intel SSDs and everything is Intel. Intel chipset, obviously, Intel CPU. You've got Intel wireless and Intel SSD. So that means it's not going to be a Frankenstein. It's going to be more stable and you won't need drivers. Windows Update will do everything. So you don't have to mess it like some of the Samsungs. You have to install a driver and stuff like that. This it's just going to work out of the box and it should be better and more stable as well now you might be able to hear it in the background and that's because it is getting slammed by prime 95 here and as you can see we've got a clock of 3.3 it's maintaining what do we got how many watts we've got around 61 watts has been pumped into it now the gpu isn't lit up of course once you light up the gpu it will not sustain 3.2 but 3.2 is perfectly fine for like a thin and light now you know it's really good in actual fact when it renders you'll see that it goes second on the chart for rendering so it is super fast at rendering we'll see how it performs in a minute in the timeline and in lightroom photoshop etc and i was actually amazed at how fast it was in rendering when the clock actually went down to like three gigahertz and sometimes under three gigahertz but yeah around that three gigahertz mark and some other laptops that look like they're getting higher frequencies were actually slower in premiere pro and i think that has to do with this has 32 gigs and they had 16 gigs that's the only thing i can really put it down to but yeah second on the chart for rendering in premiere pro i will uh, kill that prime 95 now now the fan should start cranking down and as you'll see here this is the control center and this is where you can you know put as much cpu power as you want and you can uh, manually control the gpu power as well or you can actually use ai and if you have a look here they partnered up with microsoft to actually use machine learning to actually control the cpu and gpu to give you the best performance in games productivity and even like content creation what it does is it works out what's better should we put more power into the gpu or should we put it into the cpu and yeah oh hello who's this handsome devil here bob bob of all trades what do you know yeah go check out his channel now in my test it didn't really make that much difference but i strongly believe that it will in the future and what it does is it stops you having to tweak right so instead of you tweaking your cpu gpu under volting putting more juice to the cpu gpu you can let the machine just do it and it works it out so that's pretty cool so for content creation this has got one of the best displays the 4k one i have here is friggin awesome and yeah that's the render speed there the render time um 4k display is awesome color accurate even the full hd one they are so accurate out of the box and as you'll see in the color profiles if i go to uh, color profiles so if i have a look in the color profiles you see all these different profiles they're uh, calibrated out of the factory so there's different sort of white balances here you know do you want it at you know 6000 6500 whatever but these are all baked in here like you can choose these in the control center so they've actually calibrated this out of the factory so super good for you know content creation yeah have to be one of the best laptops for color accuracy and stuff like that let's so have a look at its, some of its performances so if you have a look at its puget system photoshop benchmark score very good right up there with all the best laptops 822 is really good and such a thin and light laptop 68 for the graphic score there are ones with higher but this is a max q 1070 max q it's going to be great for photoshop don't worry about that spec per view and yeah some really good scores there it's going to be great for 3d content it is better than the 1070s so yeah there is a difference between these uh, 2070s and, and 1070s so if you are into 3d this has obviously got you covered but as you'd expect all right with this the previews are super fast look in out in out um you just go through all these you can cycle through them and look super fast 
going through all these previews. Let's just go in, out, in, out, in, out. Yeah, it's like it's super fast. It's like butter, super smooth. Let's have a look in the develop module. Oh, that was in the develop module anyway. So it is actually slower in the develop module. I've noticed that. So let's have a look at the clarity, the one that kills it. Yeah, look at that. Look at that slider there. Pretty instant. That is instant. Look at that. That's so harsh on the system, that clarity. And that's no problem at all. Get a brush out. And let's just um, underexpose some of these areas. We'll just um, underexpose it by not that much. Uh, five and just paint the walls. And as you can see, that is instant too. Nice and instant there. See if I can bring back some of that. A bit overexposed, but now look at that. Whoa. Look, it brings it in the back. And these are nefs too. Um, if you didn't know, there's nefs and JPEGs in here as well. But um, yeah, that's instant. And if I was to grab the clarity slider and try, look at that. Yeah, it does that instantly. I'll turn it up full blast and then I'll paint some things. And look at that instant clarity, instant, really hard on the system. Yeah, this thing is great for Photoshop. Illustrator, you know, Lightroom, it's just going to be great for a photographer. Let's get into Premiere Pro. Okay, so this 4K project, honestly, it's like butter. Like, this has got color correction and all. And I remember, like, it was only a few years ago that this was so choppy on 15 inch laptops, the ones with the four cores and, you know, with lesser graphics. But now, you know, it's eight gigabytes here, 1070. So, yeah, just plows through these um, 4K projects, no problem. I haven't uncompressed this. I haven't made proxies or anything like this. this is raw, straight out of a Panasonic GH4. Let's play it back. And it's all in real time. No problems. Dead high resolution photos. Let's see if it goes into the video, the 4K video that is color corrected. It's playing it at full going into the video now this is video color corrected and i'll show you the difference in color correction yeah plays through it no problems you can see it's great for content creation <coughs> excuse me my voice is gone and i'll just give you an idea of how much color correction there is turn off that layer look how much color correction so this is 4k with LUT applied and it's playing it at full. So full is just a laugh at 4K. So you're covered for 4K. So when it comes to high resolution footage, if you've got red raw footage straight out of the camera, 5K it can play it back, 6K at quarter, and 8K at quarter. That's how it is. And that's pretty much how all these RTX laptops are. So I'm not gonna waste your time just going through that. You can edit those things raw straight out of the camera but yeah you're gonna to have to reduce it down to quarter with the 6 8k the 6k can edit straight out of the camera so overall this is excellent for content creation i really like it it's got good battery life too so that's a great thing if you had to do something you know you're stuck in an airport and you've got to do some video editing or whatever you're going to get, you know, at least some decent battery life. So other laptops, you know, once you light up the graphics card, they've got such small batteries, you're only going to get an hour or two. You're going to get more than that. Good for daily use. The trackpad's good. It's just on the edge whether you can use it for video editing. I would prefer a mouse with this. The trackpad isn't that good that you can video edit with it, in my opinion. But, you know, take a mouse around with you and you've got great, thin, light, mobile workstation, great colour. It's just really good and you're going to love it. And I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.